What's going on guys, welcome back to the 8th episode of my Columbus Blue Jackets Franchise Mode series. As always, really appreciate your support on these videos. If you wouldn't mind leaving that thumbs up, it really helps me out. As you guys can see, we're currently 4-1-1 one one in the preseason. Zekris there is going off, 12 points in 6 games, so averaging to a game. Kind of had a slow season last year, hoping you know, it can bounce back. In terms of awards, as you can see there, the Carolina Hurricanes won the Stanley Cup, and we actually lost them in the first round. So you could kind of say, you know, we would have made it all the way if it wasn't for them. And if you look before that, we actually won two Stanley Cups in the three years prior. So I feel like if we can get one more Stanley Cup here, we can probably call ourselves a dynasty. So I'll show you guys the lines we have heading into this season. First line, I'm actually deciding to switch it up. Celebrini there, playing with Bedard and Zegers. They get a plus three, all 90 plus. Goudreau's down to 87, so I feel like why not, you know, give Celebrini a shot. 90 overall, highly potential there. Pretty solid stats all around aside from his shot. So uh, he's playing with Dark, who of course is a great sniper, very good shot. Uh, Zegers, even though he is a playmaker, has a pretty solid shot on him as well. So that first line hopefully will go off. Second line there, you got Crystal, Johnson, Goudreau. They get a plus five. Third line's Krebs, Zetterberg, Dumais. And finally on the fourth line there, Grand Pierre, Jenner, Iofello. I feel like that's a very solid, you know, shutdown fourth line, getting the plus two. Defensively here, Wenski and Clark Slaughter, top pair. Jerichek, Dickinson on the second, get a plus five. Matichuk and the other Jerichek on the bottom pairing. Goal tending wise, we got Kamaso starting, Tarasov there backing him up. In terms of the power play, I mean, unit one's pretty stacked. The only non 90 players, Goudreau, who plays like a 90. Uh, power play two there also gets a plus five, looks good. Uh, the four man's obviously still gonna be stacked as well. In terms of the PK, plus five in that first unit, you haven't lost anybody. PK two, I'm trying Johnson and Grand Pierre. And then PK three, we've actually got Celebrini and Krebs, which you know isn't too bad. Uh, three man wise, I think we get minus three on uh, two of the three there, but again, hopefully like the three man's not out there that much. Uh, in terms of the AHL team, they're looking really good. So we got Sanchez here, a couple X Factories at 76. Playing with Jacob Perot and Matthew Marlowe. Marlowe there, 81 medium elite. Now, roll is depth forward, so playing the AHL shouldn't hurt him. I basically feel like Jordan Dumais has a better shot, so uh, because of that, they're same rating, plus he's older, giving him more of a chance in the NHL this season. Uh, Bemstrom back in the team there, playing the back. Olis here, 80 overall medium elite, got him in that Ottawa trade, 98 passing. Uh, Plekanov's an 80, Bertuzzi, Pecker, Frazier there, Frazier, Minton, Texte. Like Minton, I thought maybe first line AHL center, but uh, the way the chemistry worked out, just how good this team is. He's playing fourth line for us. Uh, defensively there, Nasco, Hallway, Dragosev, Exposal, Edwards, and Jackala. Jackala here, also medium late, only 20 years old though. Uh, goaltending, Samard starting, Cran backing him up. And these two guys have highly and medium potential respectively, which is pretty nuts. So I think we have a lot to look forward to this season. Now, uh, before I do show you guys the ratings, we have some contracts to look at and at least, you know, figure out who we're extending. As you can see, Celebrini, Jarechek, Johnson, all need new deals. So... I am curious, what do we have here for extension dollars? 23 million. So Celebrini would cost about half of that on his own. Chair check would be the other half. Johnson was making 6-6. Only 174. That's actually super reasonable. Um, Crystal there would want. That's also really reasonable. Okay, so I think we're probably re losing Chair check or Celebrini. Luckily, they're both RFAs. Grand Pierre is 1.7. Dumay, 3.5. That's a lot for an 81, especially you know when we have that guy waiting in the wings. Tarasov here. We cannot extend because I think he's on a one-year deal. So, I mean, the RFAs we don't really have to worry about. Johnson, of course, pending UFA. We want to get locked up. Um, four years doesn't really change at two. So, let's try if he'll take like a slight bump. Maybe 6.75 for four. Does want an extension. Jerichek at 10 million bucks. I mean, I don't want to lose him, but um, hopefully his season production-wise isn't as great. Celebrini will be an RFA. And again, he's asking for 11.6. He is going to have a big year probably. So let's see how much money we have after getting Johnson and Crystal locked up. Crystal, two years only change. Let's try three years, five million, more of like a second liner for us. And Grand Pierre here is very good defensively. Two years doesn't change. Uh, he would take like one six for two years. I think that's a good deal. And as I mentioned, guys, next I'll show you the ratings for this team. As you can see here, we got 98 offense, 94 defense, 85 goaltending. So hopefully that's good enough to win our third Stanley Cup. We're going to find out. And real quick, guys, I want to thank World Hockey Manager for sponsoring today's video. I mentioned them before, but if you're like me and you enjoy franchise, you probably wish you could still play it when you're ready from your console. And now you can, as World Hockey Manager is available on both iOS and Android. If you want to make sure you're downloading the right app, just look for the Wayne Gretzky icon. He's tough to miss. And as I mentioned, guys, the game is similar to franchise mode in the sense that you get to create and customize your own team. So you can pick your logo, your jerseys, your colors. You also get to build your team via scouting and actually train your players, building up their rating. You can then, too, customize your arena, your parking lot, like 
all of your facilities. In terms of the gameplay, it's pretty solid for a mobile game. You can actually set the ice time allocation for each line as well as the strategy they're using. And then you get to actually watch them on the ice, you know, going around, scoring their goals, setting up the different plays. So I feel like it just adds a little something to the simulation. And right now, guys, I have a couple of really cool events going on. The first is a World Cup mode, which is a 24-hour group stage tournament. You can actually acquire some of the old World Cup heroes as well as NHL pros. And on top of that, they have a brand new legendary player mission where you can acquire the Art Ross card. He, of course, is who the Art Ross trophy is named after. So if you guys don't want to miss out on those events, make sure you click my link in the description box below to download the app. It's completely free. Doing so helps with the channel. Also, today, they actually gave me a code you guys can use to get yourself free 100 coins, which is an $8 value. And then you can use those 100 coins in-game to help upgrade your different facilities as well. It gives you more accurate scouting. So if you guys are interested at all, like I mentioned before, click the description box down below. This is definitely one of the cooler sponsors I've ever had. So hopefully you guys give the app a try. And there we go, Ken Johnson immediately accepted that extension. So I feel like that's a very good contract for him being 8 and overall potential, you know, to get to 90, still 26. Uh, waiting to hear back from a couple more guys. Crystal accepted as well, 5 million bucks right on. Graham Pierre is the only guy we have left. And look at that, Graham Pierre said yes too. So I think those are very good contracts we just signed. And after signing those contracts, guys, you can see Boone Jenner there paying UFA. I actually didn't look at him. He's going to want 3 million as a 70, he's 36. This might be where we walk away from the captain. It's just a lot of money with his, you know, rating. It's, he's only got bomb six potentially, so he's going to keep getting worse. Uh, Celebrini there, you know, pending RFA, Dume, Jared Check. I'm just curious, what's our extension dollars at? We've got 13 million, so basically we're going to have to decide between keeping either Jared Check or Celebrini, and then we call up the stud in the AHL to replace Dume. That, of course, being Marlowe, unless Dume takes a big pay cut, which he could if he doesn't put up the points. So, like I was saying, we'll have to wait on the rest of those contracts at the end of the year. All right, guys, so this isn't good. Right at the end of December here with a record of 17, 17, and 2. I feel like this team is way too stacked to have a 500 record. Uh, we're currently 36 points in 36 games. We're six back, the last wildcard spot there that the Bruins have. Maybe it is because we're lacking some scoring. I think I mentioned at the end of the last episode, mostly playmakers on the team. AHL team's crushing it, though, 18-8-1. First, they're in the division, although actually they have a three-way tie. Um, Olis leading this team in scoring, 29-27. Okay, NHL-wise, Rowenski, almost a point per game. See, if he's leading the team in scoring, that means Bedard needs to step up. Um, I guess if we are at 500, could definitely you know switch something up here before we make a trade. Celebrini, I mean, it's almost a point per game. Six goals, 27 assists. Bedard. Zegris is playing well as two, so like that first line's not doing too bad. Goudreau's got 30. Okay, so Johnson here on the second line's only got 21 points. Zetterberg's got 17. Way less ice time, so maybe we try that. We get a minus one, though. I just noticed, too, Goudreau's down to an 85 overall with AHL potential, so uh, there's a good chance he might retire on the end of the season, at which point we would save seven and a half million. Um, could try this. If Goudreau's on his way down anyway, put up 30 points. Makes this third line better. Had Krebs do four goals, four assists. I mean, his hands aren't that bad, though. He's playing with Zetterberg and Crystal, so their job is just get Crystal the puck. Um, pretty solid chemistry throughout. Let's just try this. The first line looked fine. Uh, if it doesn't work, I mean, this team really shouldn't be able to play worse than 500. And so right now, guys, we're at the end of January. We're still 500, which I just don't understand. So I don't want to wait another month for the trade deadline to hopefully, you know, have this team rebound or try and make a move and we have less games left to really change things up. So... Gonna try and make a big trade right now. Currently 49 points, 49 games, so averaging a point per game. We're still only four back of a wild card spot, plus we have a game in hand. So uh, if we can do something here and make our team better, it definitely makes sense to you know be proactive and get that done now. All right, guys, so right now I'm trying a one for one trade with the Arizona Coyotes. Mark Stone at 50%, down to 82 overall, but still producing like, what is that, 42 points on the year. He is getting a lot of ice time. Defensive stats there, still has 92D awareness, which I really like. Obviously all those defensive X factors, solid shot, pretty good playmaker. Probably you can play third line for us. Uh, Krebs there, one for one. Didn't plan on bringing him back after this season. I'm not liking the production there. Only 11 points, even after you know putting him on the second line. Value's pretty equal. We'll see what the Coyotes say. Trade's rejected. Okay, I feel like it's got to be close, though. We actually have a ton of picks in this year's draft, so let's try to like, throw in on a fourth and just work our way up from there. Fourth does not get it done. They don't want to retain. Now, it does say we actually could take back his whole salary. The only thing is we'd have like a million bucks in cap space, so can't make as many moves at the deadline. So we'll try it one for one, no retention. Still rejected. Let's put a pick back on. And there we go. So hopefully, like I said, we don't have to make many more moves because I'm not going to have the cap to do it. Also, too, guys, I'm curious, Kamaso's stats right now. Like, is he a reason why we're not playing well enough? Below 900, 3.32 goals against. Definitely would like to see better than that. Tarasov, 9-1-1 is a bit better, but obviously not as many games played. I mean, can we blame it all on Kamaso? I don't know. It's pretty tough, especially like last year. Had pretty decent numbers for us. All right, guys, so after that trade, here's an update look at the lines. I'm going back to Goudreau, Bedard, Zegers. I guess if it's not broke, don't fix it. His rating is falling off a cliff, though. Down to an 83 now. Again, 
HL Potential is going to do that. So I do think this is probably his last year. Uh, Celebrini on the second line there. Johnson, Crystal. Stones, Edward Dumais get a plus five. So, I mean, you look at the chemistry there. It looks awesome. Um, in terms of the power play, I think only a change to power play two where Stones on it. Obviously, as well, we got Stone on the PK there. So hopefully that trade along with the line changes, you know, wakes something up in this team. We can start to put together some wins. All right, guys. We're playing slightly better now. We have a record of 31, 27, and 4. 66 points there on the year. Tied with the Capitals. One back of the final wildcard spot the Leafs currently have. So... We're fighting. We're trying to get in. Um, let's see. Celebrini there. Lean score now over a point per game. So he's having a big year, of course, on his contract year. Um, Olis there over a point per game as well in the AHL. I just noticed the Hurricanes have 100 points already at the deadline. Wow. So, I mean, they're looking to go back to back. Um, we'll try and potentially, you know, do something here at the deadline. Obviously, I would say we're conservative buyer. I'm not sure how much that matters when we're in control, but um, I feel like that is realistic to our situation. So, Alex Turcott, one year left, 11 million. Um, Alexander Holtz, actually both on the Kings now. Shabbat, Sorokin. I mean, do we just go after Sorokin, try and get a stud goalie, um, and then, you know, run with somebody else next season? Theodore there, Dubois, so Vegas just selling. Bordelow, Bobby Brink, Panarin, Gauthier. I don't mind going after Sorokin here. I mean, I'm not sure what his stats are looking like. Commissos obviously weren't the best. Um, 918, 2.7. Very, very good goalie could potentially, you know, carry us in these playoffs. All right, guys, so if we make a trade for Sorokin, obviously Kamaso has to go back the other way. Really good contract for an 86, just under 2 million, uh, signed for one more year. I'm thinking, worst case, honestly, Samard could be our starting goalie next season. 79 overall already, look at his numbers in the AHL. 925 save percentage, 194 goals against. Obviously, he's got that melee potential, so he's gonna just continue to grow. The 67 poise is definitely concerning, but again, worst case, I think he could be our starter next year. Now, we do have two high league goalie prospects, a medium leap behind Samard, plus this high starter. Honestly, we could just give them the melee prospect, make this like a total goalie trade. Value is quite equal at that point. I think we actually could maybe get back a pick. Let's see if we can potentially get back the fourth round pick we get up from Mark Stone. San Jose has a positive record right now, so might as well just take back the Capitals pick. Value there is pretty equal. I don't mind this at all for Elias Sorokin, one of the best goalies in the game. Trades rejected, okay. I mean, I guess we just lose out on the pick potentially. And they do say yes, okay, I'm fine with that. We bring in Sorokin, that's big. All right, guys, so the trade deadline's now complete. We only made the one trade there for Sorokin, but of course, trade for Stone a month earlier. Let's see what else happened here. A lot of picks being moved. Ty Delandria to the Flyers, Sandheim to the Sharks. Uh, more picks. Uh, let's see, any big names? Uh, Logan Brown to the Ducks. We are really, you know, looking here. Mookum Dean to the Boston Bruins. Matthew Robertson to the Canucks. Brandon Carlo and Dvorak to the Red Wings in exchange for Kuzmenko. Okay, uh, that's a pretty decent trade. Zachary Luharu there to the Ottawa Senators. Our trade for Sorokin. Uh, you got more in there going to the Dallas Stars. David Reinbacker to the Edmonton Oilers. Artem Zub to the Oilers. John Beach to the Buffalo Sabres. So honestly, pretty quiet trade deadline. I think our trade for Sorokin was definitely the biggest. Connor Clifton, one year left at 1.6. He's an 80 overall, but in my opinion, really not worth that price tag. All right, guys, so after the trade deadline, here's an updated look at the team. Again, I did some roster juggling. I figured, why not just put the top three players back on that first line? Um, in terms of production, they've all got the most points this season. So playing together, they should do the best. Uh, Goudreau there on the second line is down to an 81. So yeah, I think for sure he's retiring. If not, I mean, that's going to be a lot of money to pay him at 7.5 million. He's playing with Zetterberg there in Crystal. Second line, getting a plus five. Dume, Johnson, Stone also get a plus five in the third. No change, of course, to the fourth line or the defense. Um, power play one there. I think it's the same. Maybe Goudreau I actually put back on it. Power play two there. You can see Stone out front of the net. Should be solid. Uh, I think the four mans are all the same. PK wise, uh, same first sheet. It gets a plus five. Stone's on the second there. On um, the third, Celebrini and Grand Pierre. Um, I think, you know, three man wise, we're pretty much looking at the same thing. So, um, overall, I feel like this team should be a lot better. And I can't believe I almost forgot to mention, of course, Sorokin's now our starting goaltender, 90 overall there, Tarasov backing him up. So I think, you know, Sorokin could be the X factor for us in the playoffs. Also, two guys, looking at Celebrini here, I mean, he's already got, what is that, 65 points in 62 games, so he's popping off. I think I'm going to try and extend him right now. Hopefully, like, this is cheaper than, say, the end of the year when he sees his season total or whatever. So, offer extension, we got 60 million left, he wants 12. Jared Chuck, we could still keep if we can trade away Johnny Goudreau or if he retires. Pretty much if we do this, Goudreau is not coming back. So uh, Celebrini, two years, that's all we actually need him for. Wants 12 and a half. Let's see if he would take like 11 for 90 overall player. I think that's still pretty good. And there we go, guys. Celebrini said yes, 11 million for two years. I think it's very good for 90 overall who's popping off right now. And so we're after this season here, guys, record of 44, 34, and four. So we actually ended up putting together a decent season. As you can see there, we finished with 92 points, I mean, which secured us the third spot in our division. And if you look at the wildcard teams, we're actually one point back there, both the Senators and the Maple Leafs. So 
we must have the tiebreaker with the Penguins because, yeah, we've got three more wins. So even if they get 92 points, we've got our playoff spot secured. And, I mean, you can see how close it was. Like, we put together, what is that, five straight wins there before losing the last game of the year to the Buffalo Sabres. Before that, we actually did win a lot of games after the deadline. So I think adding Sorokin definitely was huge for this team. If we didn't do that, we probably don't make the playoffs. AHL-wise, 97 points. They're in the playoffs there. 47-19-3 record. Like, absolutely ridiculous. Nieder back there, 69 in 69, double nice. Uh, Bedard, basically point per game. So I will sim just a couple more days here, make sure um, all these teams have played all their games. And as you can see there, the Penguins end up losing their final game. So we actually finished there with the two extra points. So uh, let's see how everyone did here behind Bedard. Zegers, 78, not bad. Again, Celebrini, 76, big year for him. Wierenski, 73. He continues to just be an absolute dominant player. Um, that first line though, but minus three, minus three, zero. Goudreau was a minus six, still at 70 points. Again, down to 81, probably gonna keep dropping. Stone 58 is not bad for 37 year old. Crystal over 50, Zetterberg was like one point back there. Uh, Clark and Johnson both had 42. So overall pretty happy. Dumais 30, not too bad for third liner. Uh, Sorokin stats, 897301. Like our defense is way too good for goaltenders to be playing that bad behind them. Like our top four is all 88 plus. Even our bottom pairings, like an 81, 85. I just don't understand that. Um, AHL, so Nieder back there actually ended up having 71 and 71. Um, Olas was 70, so he's just going to be a beast. I think probably makes a jump to the NHL next year at 98 passing, putting up, you know, point per game in the AHL. Perot, Bamstrom, Marlow there, 46. Um, he didn't do quite as good. And he was playing on the first line, whereas Olas was on the second line, so that's definitely interesting. I think Niederbeck as well uh, was second line too. Um, Samard there, 9-2 and a 2.03. Again, could be our NHL starting goalie next year. Uh, it, definitely a huge risk with that poise, as I mentioned, but... We might have to go that way just due to the salary cap. So, wow. Austin Matthews popped off this season. 116. McDavid right behind him. 113. Berkeley Catton there. Miko Rantanen. McCarr. McKinnon. So, Colorado's having a big season. Jack Hughes. Mitch Marner. Matthew Chuck. Goal-wise. Are you kidding me? I just noticed Math Austin Matthews put up 74. Wow. I don't think... Yeah, he hasn't even had 50-plus in this sim. And he just went and got 74 this year. That is scary. Um, defensive scoring here. McCarr was first. 106. Renski though, finishing fourth. Rasmus Anderson put up 68. It's actually, like, I think the most I've ever seen him get. Uh, goaltending stats. Kochikov again, 46 wins. I mean, obviously, the Canes were huge. Sorokin at 40, though. Save percentage-wise, Caden Primo, 917 with the Flames. And then best goals against there, Sebastian Costa, 267. Primo right behind him. I think Caden Primo, actually, with the Calgary Flames, could be taking home the Vezina Trophy. Also, two guys, in terms of rookie skaters, Mika Hervin in here with the Chicago Blackhawks. 89 overall, medium elite. First overall, 2028. 20, probably winning the Calder. Kobayashi there, 46. No one else in the 40s, so not the best rookie class. I feel like we could actually potentially have a call their winner next year. And we call it both of our medium league guys are in the AHL. Actually give them some ice time too. So uh, Hurricanes there, 125. Dominic at the President's Trophy. Only four teams, 100 plus. Our entire league, we're 14. So yeah, we definitely still deserve a spot in the playoffs. The East there was better than the West this season. Last place, Winnipeg Jets, 67. They're actually tied though with the Islanders. Goals four, Carolina was first. We were fourth. So, I mean, like that, 300-plus goals in the year. And then goals against here, the Red Wings were the best. I actually don't even see us. We're not in the best or the worst, though. So, we're somewhere in the middle. Again, I just don't understand how this defense with that goaltender. Sorokin's got less than 900 save percentage and for three goals against. But, I don't know, maybe it's just a fluke year. So, first round, guys, we got the New Jersey Devils. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully can actually, you know, make it by them. Maybe make a run at Stanley Cup. So, so look at the Devils here, guys. They got Dabrinkit, Hughes, and Bratt as their first line still. All 90-plus. Like, that's so sick. Even the second line, Meyer, Mercer, his years, basically 90-plus. The top six is nasty. Bomb six, though, definitely, you know, you lose some depth. Defensively here, Nemich is a 90. Uh, Hamilton's down to 85. They got Pesci there. So it looks not bad. Skinners are starters in 87. Like, overall, I can see why this team simmed well. Obviously, that top six for them carrying most of the weight. So let's see if we can get it done here, guys. First two games are in New Jersey. Come on, now that we're in the playoffs, anything can happen, and <laughs> we lose the first two games. All right, seven goals and five goals each game for them as well. Wow, are you kidding me? And we get swept first round by the Devils. All of the moves we made to get into the playoffs, and we get swept. Wow, we didn't let in less than four goals in a single game. 7-5, 5-2, 4-3 OT loss, 4-3. That is kind of heartbreaking, honestly. Um, AHL team here is tied 2-2 with the Rochester Americans. And they also lose in the first round in six. What is going on with these teams? And the playoffs are now complete, guys. The Ottawa Senators actually won the Stanley Cup. The Toronto Marlies winning the Calder. Honestly, I thought for sure Caroline... What? I was about to say, honestly, I thought for sure Caroline would repeat. They're picking first overall via Winnipeg. They win the President's Trophy and get to pick first overall because Winnipeg traded a unprotected first to them. Also, Montreal jumping from 12-2. to two, And Tampa Bay from 11-3. to three. What? 
So you have Carolina picking one via trade after winning the President's Trophy, not even winning the lottery because the two teams below them both make huge jumps. What is this draft? If there's like a franchise guy available, Carolina is going to be scary good. Um, we got to take a look at like the Winnipeg Jets team because who on that, you know, would they have traded for? Um, Marinsky there, seven points in four games in the playoffs. Definitely cannot, you know, pin our sweep on him. He was doing everything he could, and that's why he's going to be our future captain. Even Clark there, five points in four. So our defensemen were definitely, you know, trying their best. But Darren Celebrini, each a point per game. Sorokin's numbers were not good. Luckily, he was just a rental and not, you know, signed long term. Ottawa here, let's see, beat the Red Wings in seven, Sabres in seven, Hurricanes in six, and then Minnesota Wild there in seven. So they did take out, you know, the President's Trophy winners. Hurricanes were almost, you know, back in the Stanley Cup final again this year. But looking at the awards, um, again, you know, we know the team. Matthews got the Art Ross. McDavid, though, got the heart. I'm surprised. Like, Matthews had 74 goals. Kevin McCarthy, another James Norris, winning it back to back. Berkeley Cat in there, Lady Bing. Herbert got the Calder. Nylander, Con Smythe with the Sanders. Ooh, Leafs fans hate seeing that. Uh, Sebastian Kosa, back to back Vesna trophies. Also got the William Jennings. Uh, Segan Thaler, the Master Team with the Flames. Brent Burns, another Jack Adams. Are you kidding me? Uh, Gavin McCann there, Selkie. I think he's won that before with the Blackhawks. McDavid there, Ted Lindsay, and the Matthews, of course, Marisha Shard. Dude put out 74 goals. And now AHL-wise, Marlins, of course, won the Calder Cup. Our team, though, won the regular season, and we were still a first-round exit. Like, are you kidding me? Best regular season, of course, in the East. That means we also won our division, and we get knocked out first round. Like, come on. Um, individually here, Bystep, most points. Kessler, MVP. Of course, that's our former player of ours. Ellison, most goals. Kim, best rookie. I mean, I'm basically looking for players I recognize. Forsberg, best goalie. Okay. Bystep there, community involvement. And then Forsberg also had lowest goals again. So, um, I mean, we've got some changes to make this year. I feel like we honestly kind of got screwed. As I mentioned, too, I really want to see if we can figure out who the Winnipeg Jets gave up first round pick for. I mean, Connor, Ehlers, Perfetti, Lucius, like they already had all these guys. Nordgren, if he was drafted by the Hurricanes, he was. Okay, so Liam Nordgren here potentially got an offer sheet from the Jets, which Carolina said yes to, and the first round pick turned into a first overall. So, uh, Carolina's GM is just doing a master class. And I guess two guys, while we're here, let's look at centers here. The Stanley Cup winning team, Stutzla, Luke Hughes they got, that's right, Kachuk, Nylander, Quinvillers, 89, Sanderson, Chikrin, Line they got, um, Helenus, Norris, I mean, yeah, this is a really good looking team. Goalies, Alan Feltz, their starter. Wow, so we trade him away, say so he's just an AHL goalie, not good enough to be in the NHL, and he goes on to win a Stanley Cup. With really not the greatest numbers though, in all honesty, probably helped that he's also making like no money, so. Uh, we definitely contributed there to the Ottawa Senators win the Stanley Cup. Of course, we traded them Liney as well with Alan Felt. You know, I should have mentioned that. So um, we took, you know, two million prospects from them and they got a Stanley Cup. So I feel like, you know, we're both pretty happy there with that trade we made. And now look at our retired players here, guys. Does Johnny Gaudreau hang them up? And he does. Not the only player either. Huge retirement class. Sidney Crosby, of course, leading this thing. 1,960 points, which actually puts him second all-time behind only Wayne Gretzky, Patty Kane there, Johnny Goudreau. So I figured he probably was retiring. You can see he's down to a 74. So saves us 7.5 million, which means we can actually keep Jared check now. Eric Carlson is well-retired. He was actually with the Winnipeg Jets. And he played till he's 40 years old. Jonathan Hubert Doe stayed with the Flames after signing that big contract. So Banach out there, Kuznetsov, Sagan, Hamilton, Tyler Toffoli, Tarasenko. A couple of uh, Leafs legends there, actually, in Sagan and Hamilton. Anders Lee, Gallagher. I mean, yeah, just tons of players. Take a look here at goalies. Anton Forsberg. He, so he goes out on top of the AHL, calls it quits. Cal Peterson. All right. So, uh, Goudreau retiring honestly did help us. Boone Jenner, though, did not, which means, or at least I didn't see him there. So, I'm assuming he did not. But um, if he's still there, I would keep the captain. But again, it's got to be for the right price. So, I'm um, getting to the draft now, guys. Let's see. Is there a franchise first overall? There's not. Okay, so Winnipeg doesn't get completely screwed. There's no Bedard or anything, but still, uh, you're losing first overall either way. Gems here, a low top six, guaranteed 64. That's really not even a gem. And then third overall, Scouts didn't do the best this year. As I say that, very good chance for a high league goalie there in the second round. Okay, also a guaranteed medium league goalie, 200. Never mind, our goalie scouts are just incredible. Even this guy, late first round, good chance to be medium lead from Niagara. I'll take that. And we've got a guaranteed high starter goalie, 61. Wow. And so I just checked, guys. Boone Jenner did not retire. He's now 37 years old. So again, I'll keep the captain, but for the right price. Stone, though, is definitely gone. And so I just sent our pick here, guys, number 19. We'll take a look at the top of the draft, see if there's anything kind of crazy. But it looks to be pretty standard. <laughs> Canucks there mess up big time, uh, missing out on that medium elite. So uh, there was a guy that was, you know, good chance to be medium elite, going to go end of the first round. And it's Carl Angelitas here. I um, can see our scouts have them 29, Central Scouting 21. I was actually looking at that 29 number, so uh, good thing we're picking 19. Come on, if this is medium elite, medium top six. I mean, still, 
uh, for that spot. Not a terrible pick. I probably would have traded away if it wasn't medium top six, but what are you going to do? The next pick's 43. So a couple guys we could go here. There's actually um, some good goalies available. You guys can see 51's the high elite, so I think we got to go with him. And then I think we actually have two second round picks, but the high starter I'm not too concerned about. So we'll take Dabin here, and he's a high starter, not high elite. And our next pick is 51, so we could get another high starter goalie if he's still here. And he is. I mean, guaranteed, Rory Kessel, 53 overall. I mean, again, our goalie scouts are just absolutely ridiculous. And our next pick here is number 75. We're in the third round. Do I even have anyone kind of around this mark? Um, there's a guaranteed million goalie at 200. I guess, actually, Reese Vickers. Good chance to be medium top six in the 80s. And he's a medium top nine. He has a grinder, which kind of makes it a bit better, but not a terrible pick. Uh, now at number 83 here. I feel like we probably trade this pick because our next two guys are 200 and 332. I found that low top four. Um, unless we wanted to take a chance on a guy that could be medium elite. NHL ETA guaranteed three years. That's actually huge. Mohamed Hay. Let's go. Medium top six defenseman, 65 overall in the third round. It's not a terrible pick. As we're on the fifth round here, guys, we actually only have two picks remaining. So rather than trying to like gain a seventh, which honestly the picks have such low value at this point, you really can't. I'll just take our guarantee mainly goalie, McArdle, 47 overall, but still um, sick pick. I don't think we've ever gotten a goalie um, with X Factor, even with all of our high elite picks, which is kind of crazy. So um, next year, final pick, Sylvester, guaranteed low top four. 49 overall, honestly, end of the sixth round, low top four defenseman, not terrible. And so I'd say overall, I feel like that was actually a pretty solid draft for us. And so we're on the resign page here, guys, with just under $60 million in cap space, thanks to Johnny Goudreau retiring. Obviously, you know, it was a big part of our team. He won one con Smythe with us in our two Stanley Cup wins, but we can actually afford to resign David Cherichek now. He wants 10.8 for seven years, does not get any cheaper at two. So we'll just give him the years he wants. Now he is interested in extension, so I'm gonna try starting out at like 9.5. I feel like that's, you know, pretty fair for him. Definitely a big raise. And we still have about 6 million bucks. Um, Jordan Dumay, what's he looking for? 3 million. I think we're going to have to qualify him, play hardball. Olis had a sweet year in the AHL. 1.3 for the next two years. I mean, that's really good. I think he's going to be in the NHL. So let's try uh, 1.2, get him locked up. Now, Mark Stone, unless he wanted really cheap. Yeah, 4.6. We're just going to let him go. Bemstrom, honestly, we could just keep for like an AHL veteran. Jacob Pro, same thing. Like the AHL team was first in the league. They're losing some guys in the NHL. Might as well bring the players back that, you know, got them there. Bukhanov wants over a million, so I'm just going to qualify him. Nearback, same thing. AHL All-Star. Now, nasco has been in the AHL for a while. 27 years old at this point. I mean, he's been there so long. Honestly, I'll keep him. Somehow, the AHL team's only won one Calder Cup so far, so I feel like they're definitely capable of, you know, winning another if we can bring the players back. Bertuzzi here could be a bomb six guy for us. Now, somehow, 25 is a UFA already, so unfortunately, we have to sign him. Um, two years, because I want him locked up. Let's try two years. I guess I'll just give him what he wants. Sposal, unfortunately, never really grew too much. Only a 77. We'll let him go. Olivier actually didn't even play this year, but because uh, we're losing some guys, could have him come back to the Enforcer. He basically was scratched all last season. And now this dude here, Roche, 23-64 low elite. He is looking like a bust. Because, like, what does he have? Three years left to grow. He's a 64. I mean, I could sign him and trade him. He probably does have value. And somehow I missed him, guys. I'm curious to see what Boone Jenner is asking for. 2.9 million as a 79. Come on, Boone. That's so much money. I'll I'll wait and see if we do have it. We don't have it. It just doesn't make sense, I don't think, for him, even, you know, on the PK and stuff. Sorokin's actually gone up in rating, now at 92. Um, we can just not afford him, though. 8 million bucks. Uh, it was a good run, but he didn't perform for us in the playoffs. Letting him go. Tarasov, I honestly don't mind bringing back. Could have some Mard backing him up. Could actually even end up being the starter. What is he asking for? Two years, 1.2 million. If we could even shave off 100k. That's such a good contract. Uh, Cran at this point will be the AHL starter and then Houston the other high elite I think he's gonna be the AHL backup our goalies are just ridiculous one of those two can even start for us in the final season you can see we then have three high starter prospects and a medium elite in the waiting like just nuts and honestly guys looking at Tarasov's numbers last year as a backup they weren't that bad so I don't mind bringing them back two years let's try 1.1 just a tandem uh, him and Samari whoever the higher rated guy is plays or if they're you know same rating they can split the ice time. Olivier there rejects, which is kind of funny. Like, he's an NHL player. Tarasov wants to test for agency. Bemstrom said yes. Jerichek wants more money. Nazco, Perot, too many players. So Mark wants to test for agency. Are you kidding me? Um, all the prospects, though, said yes. So um, we got to offer more money, I guess. Jerichek, we offered 9.5 to you, so we'll just try 10. Now, Olivier I just let go because, like, he was a fourth line enforcer. He's not really worth anything more than Lee Min. Uh, so Mark, definitely want to qualify to make sure we don't lose. I'm gonna offer him exactly what he's asking, 1.2, and they will do the same for Tarasov rather than trying to, you know, save a couple hundred K there between the two of them. Tarasov still rejects, Jerichek as well. Perot though we got, same with Samard, okay. 
So these guys are playing hardball this year. Tarasov, he wants that respect. Give him an extra 100k. Jerichek here will try 10-5 on, obviously. If you're saving like a few hundred k, it does add up. Tarasov said, yeah, same with Jerichek. Okay, so everyone's locked up now, but boom, Jenner. We still have 5.5 million in cap space. So that's the issue, like 5.5 million. We could bring in, you know, a pretty solid player or we bring in Boone Jenner and they basically have a million bucks to do nothing with. And I just noticed guys, Adam Jerichek's actually dropped in rating, now 79 overall, so that's not good. But honestly guys, I'm looking at the forward depth and I think we will be okay. So might as well, you know, bring Boone Jenner back. Two years, I'll give him 275. I don't like doing this, but uh, longest serving captain in Blue Jackets history at this point for sure. We gotta take him back. <laughs> What's at death for agency? Show him some goodwill and he said that, says that to me. I mean, I'm not willing to give him what he wants though. The fact he's asking for this much, he has to take a pay cut. And there we go. So 285, we still have 3.9 million if we need it. And everybody's under contract. We got, you know, 12 NHL forwards, six NHL defensemen, our two NHL goalies there. We're looking pretty good. All right, guys, we're out the free agency period here. We'll see who's available. Obviously don't have a ton of money to spend. Charlie McAvoy, 96 overall. He wants almost $17 million. Owen Power as well is a free agent. Uh, but the youngest range can be at 27, wants 15 million. Turcotte there, Holtz, Suzuki, Luke Hughes. Are you kidding me? Uh, if we had the money, we could definitely go and get a superstar this year. Matthew Savoy, RFA, okay. Uh, Jack Quinn, those are UFA. Patrick Line after winning the cup with the Sanders. Same with Shakran. Both go to free agency. Wow. Josh Norris there too is leaving. Kind of crazy, honestly. I'm curious about goalies. Um, wow. Kako, 88 overall, wants 2.2 million. We can actually get this guy. We do kind of need a goalie. 24 years old, 900 save percentage, 73 poise. I mean, I'm not sure which team he's on. Buffalo, we might as well make them pay him. Um, let's do like two years, 2.5 million, third round pick. Yeah, basically making sure Buffalo pays him. And if not, we get a steal there. Um, after that, Wolf, 83, 1.4. Dostal 83 only wants 800k, which is super good. Now, taking a look at two way goalies here with potential, you actually got 2057 medium starter, LeBeau. I mean, normally I'd probably sign this guy, but we actually have too many goalie prospects as it is right now. So uh, I guess I'll let one of the uh, computers sign them. Beagle, though, low elite uh, prospect, we're definitely make an offer on. All right, guys, now next year I'm trying to make a blockbuster trade at the Minnesota Wild to get Joel Erickson Eck, making 7.2 million for the next three years. I feel like he's the perfect piece for this team. What we're missing, 90 overall now. And you can see last year, he had 73 points, very good defensively, 98 D awareness. I mean, pretty much perfect with 88 shot block and 96 stick check. He's also got a solid shot on him, pretty good physically as well. Not the best, you know, playmaker, but again, we have so many playmakers on this team. Erickson X, the kind of guy we're missing. So I'm making a big offer. Alex Zetterberg there. Last year, you know, didn't do too bad, but he's kind of been stuck on that third line with us. I don't mind, you know, getting him a shot with the Minnesota Wild. Really good playmaker again, but not the best shot. Solid defensively. Kent Johnson's a bit better defensively, though. And honestly, it's between him and Johnson, the fact that, you know, Johnson's actually drafted by the Blue Jackets in real life. I decided to keep him for that reason. And then Matichuk here, I'm actually adding as well. 25 years old, 85 overall. Really good contract. 4.75 for the next three years. But I feel like he's been riding our bomb D pair, so I'm kind of being nice to him now. Plus two is a guy in free agency I actually want to replace him, so we'll need the money for that. Again, a second round pick back with Ericsson Act 2. We'll see what the Wilds say here. Trades accepted. Okay, I was going to say the value was pretty much spot on. Uh, both those things were on the block. So I think that was a very nice trade for us. Also, two guys looking at our goalie situation. Two high elites, two medium leads, three high starters. Like, are you kidding me? Definitely just going to be using these high starter goalies in trades, although their value there is really not as high as I expected. And now with this $7.3 million in cap space, guys, I'm bringing a familiar face back to Columbus, and that is Seth Jones. He actually just finished his, like, eight-year contract for Chicago Blackhawks. Obviously, he wasn't with them the entire time. I got moved around a bit there. You can see trade to Anaheim. Played in HL for a bit after being traded from Anaheim to Nashville. And then finally, you know, got called up last year. So 84 overall there, minus nine last year. Again, this is definitely more of a move with my heart than my head. But I feel like it can be kind of fun. So two years, he wants 5-3. Let's do 5-5 five, five for two years. Bring him back. Reunite him with Rowenski. Although I don't really see him playing on the top pair. He'll be a bomb pair guy for us. But I think that would be kind of fun. If we can actually win a Stanley Cup with Seth Jones back on the team. And there we go, guys. Philip Beagle, the low elite, said yes to our offer. Still waiting to hear back, of course, from Jones. And let's go. Seth Jones returns to Columbus. Extremely happy with the offer. I mean, the fact that he was playing in the AHL season ago, he's got to be. And now that 88 overall goalie said yes as of now. I was basically just doing that to put pressure on Buffalo. And as you can see, they did match, which honestly, I did them a favor. That was a pretty good contract. And now next year, guys, are trying to make sure the LA Kings offering up a couple prospects. We don't really need any more for their second round pick. 
Jeff Bertuzzi here was kind of a bit of a dud. Like we drafted him second round 2023. When he came into the draft, he was at least a 74 overall. He might even been higher than that. And for whatever reason, he just has not grown. Obviously he's been in the AHL, but he should have had some natural growth and he just never got that. So um, moving on from him, getting him a chance there with LA. Plus, you know, it's a pretty good place to live. Um, also with him, Steve Roach there. He was the low elite. That's only 64 at 23. So don't really see him panning out. If we get a second round pick for both these guys, I think it's a smart move for us. Kings say yes. So there you go. Just adding, you know, more draft picks for next year. And now Plekhanov just got an offer sheet from Montreal, 1.3 million. I think he was asked for 1.2. So uh, we'll just match that. He's like 80 overall, medium top six. Don't want to lose him for nothing. And so at the end of August, guys, and Jordan Dumay still doesn't have a contract. So we're going to see if we can get him locked up now for cheaper. We got 2.3 million in cap space. He's asking for 1.4 for one year. Two years, 2 million. Okay, so yeah, let's definitely get him there. Let's see if he'd say yes to 1.75 for two years. It's an 82. I think that's, you know, pretty fair. Plus, I think he still has one year left to grow, so if he has a decent season, it could go up in rating. And there we go, Dume accepted the offer. So I think everyone now under contract. All right, guys, we're starting next season. I'll show you what the team is looking like. Definitely gonna be an interesting year. Got a lot of young players coming up. So first line there, still Celebrini, Bedart, and Zegris. Second line there, we got Crystal Johnson, Olis. He, of course, was the guy we traded for from Ottawa, 99 pass. And I feel like, you know, feeding Johnson, more specifically Crystal the puck, hopefully they do well. Uh, third line there, Dume, Eric Sinek, and Marlowe. Marlowe, another guy that was, you know, in the AHL last year. Not quite as good a playmaker, better shot though, has some X factors, better skater. Thought about putting him, you know, second line there. Gets a little more chemistry, but I think, you know, the 99 pass with Olis, we gotta give that a shot. Um, fourth line's the same there, Jenner down to 77. Grant Pierre though, is an 84. Defensively here, I mean, look how stacked this is now. Obviously, same top four, but the bottom pair now of Adam Jerichek and Seth Jones gets a plus five as well. So hopefully that helps them play better. Goaltending, Tarasov is the starter, so we're giving him a chance. Hopefully he does well. Samard backing him up there, 81. In terms of the AHL team, you got Kranz, 78, Houston, 75. Both high leads for AHL goalies, which is just ridiculous. First line here is Plekhanov, Sanchez, and Pecker. Pecker's now an 82. Roll those depth forward, so I don't think it'll hurt him playing the AHL this season. And my thought was, since he's making no money this year, but he'll need an extension, keep him in the AHL so he'll be cheap next year, as IFL is actually in the last year of his deal, so I feel like Pecker could probably replace IFL in year 10. Um, even Sanchez has a chance to make the team next year, like, only 80 overall, but his shot is ridiculous. We could probably call him up this season, honestly, if we, like, you know, do a two-for-one trade and have an open spot. Let me know if you guys think I should give him a shot in the NHL, because, yeah, that shot, I mean, the more I look at it, the more I feel like, you know, maybe put him in for a Dume or, I don't know, trade one of the other guys away, give him a chance. Uh, second line, there's the veterans, all E plus, they get a plus two. Same with the third line. Frazier's not actually a centerman, but still plus two chem. Fourth line is not too bad. Defensively, I think, basically the same, but Jack is the medium lead. I'm now on the second pair. So, yeah, overall, you know, both teams should be playoff teams again. Although I thought that last season, and it was pretty close. So, we'll see what happens. Also, too, guys, in terms of the captaincy with Johnny Gaudreau leaving, had to name a new alternate captain, no surprise. It's Connor Bedard. I mean, come on. I feel like he'll probably be the future captain once Wierenski eventually retires. But heading into this season, guys, I'll show you what our ratings are looking like. Can we win our third Stanley Cup? We've got 97 offense, 97 defense, and 83 goal timing. I think that's like the highest defense we've had yet. So um, hopefully this team get it done. If you guys enjoyed this episode, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.